We praise God for uh, the grace He has given us to come together, share the Word of God, and uh, spend this time in His presence. Um, I wanted to share this time a couple of uh, scriptures that the Lord has put in my heart. Scriptures that are burning inside of me. And uh, these are scriptures that help me understand why I am on earth and that pushes me to accomplish what God has put me to accomplish on earth. I have two scriptures that we're going to read and quickly we're going to study and know what is the will of God for our lives. And I invite you and especially I want to talk to women. Um, we're going to study Genesis uh, chapter 2 um, verse 18. And also Psalm 139, we're going to read the verse 14 to 16. These are scriptures that are very, very well known. Uh, we're going to read Genesis 2, 18. The Bible says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. That's the beginning, at the beginning of the creation, when God created man and all the other creation, uh, creature, the Bible says, man look around him, but he could not see someone who was comparable to him. And the Bible says, God said it is not good. I have heard sometimes people saying, uh, the woman was not in the plan of God. But I believe God, the woman, was in the plan of God from the beginning. And God wanted the man to desire the presence of the woman beside him. And God wanted this desire to become big before he brings the woman. That's why when the woman came, he was ready to exclaim that this time I can see someone who is like me, who is bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Amen. And uh, the second scripture that I wanted us to read is uh, in Psalm 139, as I said. We're reading the verse 14 to 17 or to 16. The Bible says, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows, knows very well. My frame was hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. I like that word. Your eyes saw my substance when I was being yet unformed and in your book they all were written. The days fashioned for me. The days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. I would like to read the same scripture in uh, the Good News Translation, the Bible says, I praise you because you are to be feared. All you do is strange and wonderful. I know it with all my heart. When my bones were being formed, carefully put together in my mother's womb, when I was growing there in secret, you knew that I was there. You saw me before I was born. The days allotted to me had all been recorded in your book before any of them ever began. Amen. These are scriptures that help us understand that we are not by random on this earth. And this is the message I want to bring to you as a woman. That you have not been created just by random. You do not exist by yourself. 
You exist because there is someone who has planned for you to be on this earth, on this time, on this century, on to, to still be alive today. There is a God who has a plan for you, for your life. There is a God who formed you, who created you, who carefully made you. And I like the Bible. The Bible says that he even planned all our days before even one of them began. Before even you came to existence, before even you, the other human being could see you, God knew you and God formed you and God had, had a purpose for your life. And the Bible says when the, the, um, the psalm that we just read says that God knew. This is David, the, the psalm of David. He's saying, God knew me. And I want you to take this word like your own and say, yes, and this is the truth. God knew you before even you came on earth. And God created you for a purpose. You know, sometimes as human beings, we can have things, we can have stuff, we can even buy them with our money when even we don't need them. Because, you know, sometimes our eyes can think, oh, this is beautiful. This is, uh, I should have this. I should have that. Sometimes we have things that we don't need. And sometimes we may think that God sees things the same way. No. God has a purpose for everything that he has created. And God has created you for a purpose. And God has put you on earth to accomplish a destiny that only you can accomplish. And I want to exhort you and call you. This is a call of God for you to understand that God has not forgotten you. That you are not just someone wandering around not knowing why you are here and if really you don't understand why you are on this earth you need to connect to Jesus you need to come to God and you will understand why you have been created that's why the Bible says that when someone is in Christ he is a new creature they all have passed away and behold, everything has become new. Why? Because when Jesus, when God is inside of us, when we are born again, we come back to the plan of God for our lives. But when we are far from God, because the Bible says that all have sinned and they have been pushed away from God's plan. But when we come back and receive Jesus in our lives, then we come back to the plan that God had for us from the beginning. And David knew this. And he is saying, I am a wonderful creature. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. For him is saying, God has made me. And not just for random. He has made me for a purpose because he is God. He knows what was yesterday. He knows your today and he even knows your tomorrow. He even knows everything about you. He can even guide you with a finger. He can open your eyes to see the future, but I thank God because he leads us step by step, day after day. And David is, say, is saying in this psalm that I am wonderfully made. You know, for us to understand the purpose of God and to understand how we can accomplish the destiny for which God has put us on earth, we need to know ourselves. We need to accept what God has put in us. We need to accept the mission. We need to find out, to discover ourselves in Christ. And today we see many people women are being used maybe by some somehow to to become what god has not created them to be and some by not knowing that they are valuable for god they are trying to find some fulfillment in the things of this world to accomplish to use their body sometimes for prostitution or for all kind of evil things but I want to tell you as a woman that you are valuable to God. That God has put his spirit inside of you. The life that God has given you, he has given it to you for a purpose. And God 
has put his spirit of you in you if you are born again so that you can be his image on this earth and so that you can accomplish the destiny for which he has created you. And let me repeat what I said before, that you have a destiny, you have a mission, and this mission nobody else can accomplish it beside you. You will tell me, but God has so many people. Yes, God doesn't waste his resources. God will never waste a human being that he has created because he has created you for a purpose. And when we read this um, psalm, the Bible says that my frame, this is verse 15, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. It was not hidden from God because he was the creator. And skillfully, right in lowest part of the earth, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. The eyes of God saw you, saw me, when I was yet unformed. When maybe people will say I was nothing, but I was everything, God saw me. When human beings could say this is just something we can just push, push out, uh, abort, but God knew I was someone he was creating for a purpose to accomplish things on this earth, to bring salvation maybe to many, to bring joy, peace, to, to help someone on the earth. I believe as a woman, God has created you for a purpose. On this month that we are celebrating the woman, I want you to ask yourself why God has created me. What is the destiny for which God has created me? What is my mission on this earth? But before you accomplish the mission, you need to know that you have been fearfully and wonderfully made. You need to accept that God, there is no mistake in the way even God has created you physically. In the way the beauty that God has given you as a woman, there is nothing to remove. There is nothing to add. God has wonderfully made you. You need to understand this, to accept this as a woman and to, to be proud of who you are as a woman. Unless you come to this point, you will not be able to help someone else. Unless you accept yourself and be confident of who you are, you will not be ready. You will not be capable of helping someone else, of bringing the joy to someone's life. Because even today, we see many friendships are being broken, many marriages, sometimes because of lack of confidence, because we do not accept ourselves and we want other people to fill this void inside of us. Let's come to Jesus. The Bible says in uh, Ephesians, if I can find this verse, um, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible says this, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us. We have been created in Christ. I would like to read this also in uh, Good News Translation. I like this translation. The Bible says, God has made us what we are. God has made us, has made you. This message is also for you as a man. God has made you who you are. Because even as a man, if you don't accept yourself, if you are not confident, let's say of who you are, physically, of what God has made you to appear, to, to be, you will not be able to help someone. You will not be able to have a wife in your house that you will love like Christ loved the church. The Bible says, God has made us who, uh, God has made us what we are. I am confident, you have to be confident that God has not made a mistake. He has made you, and the talent inside of your life, the, the gift of the, the, the spirit that you have received, all of them are working together with who you are to accomplish the mission. And let me tell you, your mission is not mine. Mine is not yours. Everyone has a mission. You will say, but 
we have how many billions of people on earth? Maybe nine billions or whatever. How each one has a mission? Yes. Each one of us has a mission to accomplish. And God is awaiting of you to accomplish what he has called you to do. And when you accept yourself, you will accept also the talent that goes with you. With, when the Bible says that we were created, formed in the secret place, that means God has put together talents, has put together things, uh, even the, the gifts of the Spirit that He has given us. He has put them together to go along who we are to accomplish the mission that He has given us. I will maybe before I finish say it in more details, but let, let continue with the verse. And the Bible says God has made us what we are. And in our union with Christ Jesus, he has created us for a life of good dead, of good deeds. I'm reading it again. And in our union with Christ Jesus, he has created us for a life of good deeds. He has made us who we are. But in our union with Christ, he has created us. In our union with Christ, he has created us for a new life. This is so profound. If we want to know or to want to accept who we are, we need Christ. He will bring, when we receive him in our lives as our Lord and Savior, he will give us the satisfaction that we need. He will help us to discover how valuable we are. He will help us, help us to discover that we are priceless, that we don't value money, we don't value gold, we value more than that. We value the life of Christ. We value the sacrifice that he gave on the cross for us. And the Bible says, in union with Christ, I compel you, dear woman, you cannot live your life without Christ. Maybe you are struggling. Maybe you don't know what to do in your life. Maybe you have tried cigarette, you have tried alcohol, you have tried sex, you have tried so many things, but you still fill the void. Yes, you need the union with Christ because God has created us who we are. We will not change this. I will not change who I am. When you see me, you know that's Astrid Sonny. Yes, God has created me who I am. He has created you who you are. But the Bible continues, and in our union with Christ, he has created us for a life of good deeds. You need this union. Someone needs to give his life to Christ. You need a time where you can say, ah, oh, because of that day that I gave my life to Christ, everything has become new. You need a new life in Christ. And it is in him that we can discover the real purpose of our life. It is in Jesus that you can discover that you have not crea been created less or more, but you have been created as this person who is complete to accomplish what God has created you for. Hallelujah. And the Bible continues saying, I will read the entire verse, God has made us what we are. And in our union with Christ Jesus, he has created us for a life of good deeds, which he has prepared for us to do. Which he has already prepared for us to do. God is ahead of us, giving us the strength to live the life of God. I, I love the Bible. The Bible says, for those who have re to those who have received him, who have received him, this is a John... Um, John 1, I think it must be verse 14. He has given them the power to become children of God, to those who received him. Living the life of God, you don't live it by your own strength. You live it by the power of God. You live it because of the sacrifice of Jesus. He has paid the price. He has, given, he has done everything so that you and me today, we can live the life according to what he has planned for us. That's why I want to tell you that you have been wonderfully made. 
you have been placed on this earth. I don't know where you live. Maybe um, here. Maybe in whatever part of the earth. But you have been created for a purpose. Rise up where you are. A a as a Christian woman. Rise up. Let tell people around us that God has created us for a purpose. In um, another in this series, uh, I will talk again about the real purpose of what God has created us for. And I believe that the first thing that you need to know is to know that you have been created for a purpose. You are not randomly made on this earth, but you need to be connected. You need to receive Jesus. You need this new life in him so that with this new life, you can accomplish the will of God. But sometimes it's sad to see that there are even some people who are born again, but who don't understand quite well the purpose for which God has created them. But the, the, this man is saying in Psalm, that your eyes to some my substance, being yet unformed. And in your book they were all written, the days of fashion for me, when as yet there were not none of them. The days of, of your life were written down when none of them was yet existing. I am so confident to know that God knows the number of my days. I am so confident to know that everything for my life, for my future, are written in the book of God. And when you come in Christ, you put your step in this will of God for your life. You put your, your step in the destiny that God has for you. If maybe today you are still wondering why you exist, I, I, I command you or I plead with you, give yourself to the Lord if you have never given your life to him. But if you are a born again believer, I commend to you to go deep in the word of God, to go deep in your relationship with Christ, because he will never waste what he has created. God will never rest, waste his resources. God will never waste you. God has created you to accomplish a mission. And this mission is a waiting of you. God is waiting on you to do certain things that only you can do. How precious you are. Because this mission is your mission. And the world, sometimes we look around us, we see all kind of mess as Christian women or men. We see all kind of mess around us. We ask ourselves, but what is going on? No, the problem is, are you accomplishing the mission God has created you for? Are you accomplishing it? Are you doing what God has created you to do? Because some of the people around us, they need us to open our mouth to tell them the love of God. They need us to open our mouth to tell them, to show them how God has created them for a purpose. But someone needs to, to rise up. Someone needs to tell the story. Someone needs to share his own story. So people can know that this book, the Bible, is not just many writings in it. But is a story, a living story, not only of the people in it, but also of the people today living in this era, living today, who are ready to share this story to other people. My prayer today is that you will not miss your destiny. You will not miss the mission for which God has created you because you have been fearfully and wonderfully made by the almighty God and this God has you in mind. Not only that, on his book has been written the days of your life with all the details. He knows everything about you. Even your future is already written. Put yourself in line with God. Put yourself back in line with, with the love of God. Love him. Look for him. Take time to meditate his word. Take time to, to be in alignment with the Spirit of God to, take, to get the revelation from Him to understand that your life is valuable. I love you. And I'm going to pray for you. Lord, thank you for your word. 
And thank you for each one who have heard this. I bless them in your name. And I pray that each one discover the destiny, the destiny for which you have called them to, to exist. And each one will live according to this destiny for your glory. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.